If it's a UK gift, then there is really only one viable option, and that is uh, the older version of the Tonic, the Typhoon, the Tranche Ones, as they're known. There's not many of them, and they are a little bit out of date in terms of their support, but uh, that's about the only thing we've got spare. I use that word advisedly because there's almost nothing spare right now, but those are the ones that are due to leave service quite soon. I mean, UK doesn't have much, if any, spare capacity. We, we, we know that the, the military has been shall we say, uh, less funded than it used to be. So it is, it is a lot smaller. That creates its own problems. Um, and, and of course, we do need to worry about if Russia decides to do something else, is NATO ready and what is our part with the NATO defence? So we can't afford to give everything away. Therefore, the only thing that's really sat there that could in theory be given without taking too much of a hit on the RF's capability is those tranche one typhoons. But they come with a huge challenge. Um, you know, you're going to have to train people up them, train, train the maintainers, provide spares packages. That aircraft has been going out of service now for many years. We keep bringing it back from the dead, but it's, and now it's going once again, which means we've stopped developing the software. We've stopped the supply chain of certain spares and avionics. And my personal view has been it's not the right aircraft because there aren't enough. I think it needs to be something like an F-16. There are thousands of those in the world. They're still being built. They'll be upgradable for many, many years. Um, they can carry all the modern weapon systems that other aircraft can, same as the F-35 or even the F-22 for that matter. They're very capable. I think one-on-one -on -one against a typhoon, you might well take a typhoon, but if you can get 200 of those and, and you know that they've got a lifetime and a support network that will run them on for 10, 15, 20 years, um, I, my, that would be my preference. Yeah, it'd be incredibly good at the air-to-air -air role. It, it, I mean, I always, when everyone says, what's the typhoon like? I say, it's a rocket ship. It, it goes incredibly high and fast. In air combat, it's all about kinetics. So if you're higher and faster when you launch your weapon than the other guy or girl, um, you win. So the air-to-air -air role, I think, would be a very strong one. It has a limited air-to-ground role, but I actually don't think that's the priority right now. There are other systems to take out the tanks or, or, the, or the ground systems. It, sticking a Typhoon into harm's way to, to take on a tank is, is sometimes a, a risk not worth taking. I, I think they will be primarily a defensive platform. And, and if you can keep Russian air away from the fight, as they largely have done, but now even more so, and keep them totally on the back foot, then maybe those tanks will be the difference and then we can, we can defeat them on the ground uh, and the air will just maintain sort of a neutral, a neutral position, if you like.